Our first verse will be uh, Galatians 2. Chapter 2, we'll look at verse 19, Galatians 2 and verse 19. And the Bible says here, for, for I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. And I want us to focus on that phrase, that I might live unto God. Uh, I know a lot of Christians that have not decided to live for God. They're saved, and they got a Savior, but they don't really have a Lord. He doesn't dictate to them how to live. They don't. They choose to live pretty much any way they, they want, and uh, have not decided to be faithful to church and be faithful to their devotional time with God and, uh, and the, the, all the things that accompany good Christian living. They're just not interested, and uh, so they don't live the Christian life. And uh, maybe, maybe they're afraid of uh, people mocking them. When you live for God, that'll happen, and maybe they're afraid of that, and it bothers them for people to mock them. Uh, Sometimes, uh, maybe they're afraid of being deprived. If I live for God, I won't be able to do what I want to do. And, uh, and so they choose not, not to live the Christian life. Uh, this verse talks about uh, that I'm free from the law, that I might live unto God. I want to I want to live unto God now. I lived for the devil for a while. Uh, he got some strength out of me, some money out of me, some of my time. Uh, but I, I see that was an error. I see that was folly. And I don't want to uh, do that anymore. I want to sign up for something better. And so I've chosen to live the Christian life. That means when I leave church, I'm still a Christian. Uh, when I leave church, I still act like a Christian. I still talk like a Christian. Amen. Amen. I, I, wanna, I want the world to know that I'm a Christian. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I, I know what the power is. Amen. I, I, think, uh, I think we have a chance to influence folks. I, I think we can, we can do something that benefits and helps the cause of Jesus Christ with our lives. And I say this, the cause of Christ is a very great cause. I don't know of anything greater in all of life. You can influence somebody for the cause of Jesus Christ. You've done some of the best things your life could ever be used for. And, and that's the truth. Let's pray tonight. Uh, God, I pray now that you'd bless the message and help us as Christians see the value of living unto thee with, our, with the life, the strength, uh, the wisdom and smarts that you gave us, uh, whatever level that is. And uh, God, that we take our talents. Uh, we, we take, uh, be mindful as we go to work, be mindful as we shop at the stores, be mindful of the value we have as being a testimonial to you. And I pray that our lives would shine a light in so much that people would see it and maybe be drawn to it and maybe even be changed because of it. And I pray, Lord, you help us to take heed to the message tonight. And I pray for thy spirit and I pray that you uh, fill me up and uh, help my uh, brain think right, my mouth to talk right, and I pray your people uh, would get the message and uh, consider it well and, and uh, decide to do this great thing to live this Christian life. And I pray it and ask it in Jesus' holy name. Amen. All right. Uh, a life lived unto God will be a self-denial life. So just go ahead and get ready for that. It'll be a self-deniable life. You will not be able to go run and party. You will be restricted somewhat. But I found this. I can replace it with something good. I used to go party and drink, and when I got saved, we went bowling. Amen. We went hockey. <laughs> we did all kinds of neat things. I didn't know you could have so much fun as a Christian. I thought you had to cuss and be cool and get your hair purple and your tongue pierced and do all kinds. Of, I didn't, you don't have to do any of that. That's, that's what the devil has his crowd doing. But the Christians, they can have a good time being a Christian. They don't have to, uh, they don't have to uh, uh, live miserably. Uh, but it will be a self-deniable life. Uh, when Sunday, Sunday is here right now, you have denied your, your time at home. You have denied your time with your family. You've denied the beach. You've denied whatever is out there to be here. 
And, uh, and that's important because you're investing in that life. Going to church is part of the Christian life. And I know those people that don't want to make uh, 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 their lives, uh, uh, live their Christian life out, they're not here tonight. It's just, and I don't say everybody, so some people are not here for, Rhonda broke her ribs, and you know, I think she broke two of them, something like that. So she ain't going to see her for a while. She's mending up, amen. Uh, and she has every right to, to stay home and mend up. But uh, I, I, I like the Christians that decide to get in, hide hair and all. Uh, Christians decide to live the Christian life because if you make the full use out of your walk, you influence more people for Jesus Christ. But it's a self-deniable life. And when you uh, deny yourself, uh, it is, uh, it's a proof of your devotion to him. People see that, that it's not just in word. They see that you've denied yourself, and it shows your devotion and impresses folks uh, uh, to, to do the same. Uh, take your Bible and go to Philippians, if you will, in chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 7. When Paul says this, he said... Uh, in verse number seven there, uh, but what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. That's denial. Uh, he's, uh, the way it used to be is not the way it is now. Uh, all that stuff is a loss to me now. Amen. And uh, the Christian life is a deniable life. Uh, you deny yourself to uh, show your appreciation and your faithfulness to the Lord Jesus Christ. A self-deniable life is proof of your love for him. Amen. You give up. I like military guys. Military guys, that's what they do. They sign up. It's an unselfish thing. They sign up, give their selves. Why? Because they love their country. And when they sign up and, and sign up for four years, brother, that's proof they love their country. <laughs> uh, you can't deny that. Now, some people might get drafted. Okay, that's some down. I'm talking about the guys that sign up. Amen. And uh, that shows their love. And I, that's what I want to do. I want to sign up. I want to leave out of here and live the Christian life. I got reminded today of uh, something I've known for years, but it just hit me uh, in the face today. And I think God did it on purpose. Uh, Anthony gave me these glasses, you know. And uh, they say, Jesus saves. Brother Gorski printed up. And they say, Jesus saves on them. And then and he got me this hat. And, you know, somebody give you something. You make use of it. You know, just throw it away, you know. So, you know, here I am, you know, Jesus saves, and I thought, well, amen, he gave them to me, God gave them to me, I'm going to wear them. So I wore it all day long, and went to the restaurant, and I get to the restaurant, and here I stand, you know, and the guy says, hey, you a Christian man. I said, how'd you know? <laughs> and uh, he says, me too. And I says, yeah. He happens to be the owner of the restaurant. Oh, really? So I might even get me a free meal out of this thing. I, but anyway, um, uh, you know, and then when I was getting ready to leave, he made, a, uh, he made an effort to hurry up over and catch me before I leave. Hey, the pastor, thank you for coming and have a nice day kind of thing. And, you, and I thought, wow, you know, without the hat and the glasses, he'd never even known. And maybe, maybe the shirt and tie might have given it away, but I don't know for sure. A lot of people see you on Sunday. They think you come out of church, so there's something there. Uh, but that was obvious. Amen. I don't always do that, but I thought how, how, how sweet it is when you do do that. Uh, I remember one time I had a Bayview shirt on, a simple little shirt, resurrection shirt, you know, had Bayview bath, and I'm sitting in a car wash. Man, a guy comes up behind me, black fella, says, hey, man, you a church man. I said, I am. You're a Christian man. I said, I am. He said, I love Jesus. You love Jesus, too. I could tell. I said, yeah, I do. And then we had fellowship. Boy, we sat there waiting for our car to get washed. We just talked about the Lord. Had a good old time. It would have never happened. would have never happened had I not wore that. But, you know, people are going to think you're weird. People going to, there's the other side of the world going to uh, have something to say, especially you kids. You know, you kids, you all, you all want to uh, be accepted, you know. We all have that. Well, adults are the same way, just not as bad. <laughs> but you kids got to double, you know. You kids want to want to make sure you're accepted. You don't want anybody making funny and all that stuff. You stand up for Jesus Christ and go ahead and take it the next. You just go ahead and take the mocking. Let them say what they want to say. Deep in their heart, they know what you've got is real, and they want it. And one of these days when they get old, they may, talk, they may try it. But without somebody to look to, without somebody that's running the game, they ain't never going to even try. They don't even know about it. don't even care about it. I thank God I had somebody in my life that cared about the Christian life and lived it in front of me. And, buddy, it helped me. It helped me. It tenderized my heart. It helped me. It point, got me pointed in the right direction. And there's no... There's no uh, 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 no price for that. A self-deniable life is proof of your concern for the Lord Jesus Christ. 
uh, take your Bible and go to Galatians chapter 6. I just want to say that if you live the Christian life, expect it to be a life of some, some denial. There's going to be some denial. Uh, you're going to be faithful to God. You'll deny yourself to make it to church, to church activities and church times. You'll be faithful to God. You'll make it to the time of prayer and time for your Bible. And the flesh ain't going to like any of it. The flesh is never going to want to pray. Amen. He's going to want to be entertained. He's going to, he's going to suck up all he can from this world because he's of the dirt. God made him from the dirt, and he's of the dirt. Bless God, he likes all the junk here. But it's a dead-end road, and it's going nowhere. And that's the truth, brother. But our road uh, 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 ends at heavenly places, and this is the life that we choose, and it's the right choice. Uh, but people can live it, or they can squander it. And I know there's a lot of Christians that just squander it. And I hope you're not one of them. I hope tomorrow when you're out and about and running your, uh, your little life the way you've got to do it and earning money or whatever you've got to do, I hope you remember who you are. I hope you remember that I'm a Christian. Yeah. And I take every opportunity. If anybody asks, I'm going to tell them so. And if, they, if they're not asking, up, I'll, I'll wear something to make them ask. I don't know, but uh, live your Christian life. We are supposed to be lights. You know what a light is? You don't put it under a bushel. Amen? You shine it out there. Amen. I, I like that. But it's... Uh, it's um, it's some denial has to be a part of that a part of that idea. All right, Galatians chapter six and verse number fourteen. The Bible says, "But God forbid uh, that I should glory save in the cross of of the Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world." Yeah, that's denial, crucified. Uh, something dying, something being given up, something that this flesh would love to have but says no to, so he can be active in the things of God. To live unto God is a life that is going to be misunderstood. There are people that are never going to understand why you do what you do. Uh, they're always going to scratch their head over it. They're always going to marvel at it. Uh, take your Bible and go to 1 Peter. And you get 1 Peter, get chapter 4. Uh, they're always going to marvel at it. And uh, they're going to be amazed at why you do all this stuff. And you go to church as much as you go. And... You go to these meetings all the time, and uh, they don't understand it. Uh, the Bible says, the natural, ma uh, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. And uh, I think something about it can't discern it, something like that. Yeah, like that. Amen. All right, we're at uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, and you get chapter 4, notice verse 4. The Bible says here, wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. And they speak evil of you because you're different. Amen. And uh, I remember when I was a lost man, uh, uh, we used to, you guys get all together on Friday nights and we go do our regular thing. And I got saved and I, I, uh, I wanted to go one more time. And I wanted to go and I wanted to tell them about Jesus and I wanted to tell them that I got saved. And I was going to go, and I wasn't going to drink, and I wasn't going to play poker with the guys, and I wasn't going to do any of that. I was just going to go and let them know that I'm a Christian now. And uh, I did so. And uh, uh, I found out that temptation was very great that night. And I messed up. And I went home, and I wept over it. And I thought, never again, never again. I'm not ever going back. And uh, uh, God smote my heart that night. I went in there with good intentions. I really wanted to be a testimony. I wanted to let the guys know that I'm a different person now. I've got Jesus now, and I'm not going to do all the stuff that you guys are doing. They were playing the music, and they were dancing, not me. And they were drinking, not me. They were smoking, not me. They were getting a poker game up, not me. I'm not, not going to be part of it. Amen. And uh, I never went back after that night. Never went back. I got home. I didn't go to church and get preached at. I got home, and I got preached at by God. And God wore me out that night. He says, you're my son now, and uh, you had good intent, but the temptation was too great. You can't put yourself in situations like that. And I said, amen, thank you, Lord, and I just told myself I'm not ever going back. And they probably wonder, whatever happened to old Andrews? He used to come around here every Friday. I haven't seen him in weeks, months, years. Amen. But I have a new life now. Amen. And if you're going to live for life, you're going to be misunderstood. Now, people are not going to understand why you do what you do. They're going to think it's strange that you don't run with them anymore like this Bible verse says. Your conversation will be misunderstood. Well, how come you don't cuss? What are you, a cop? <laughs> what are you, well, I guess they cuss. What are you, a preacher? 
Now, some of you are not preachers, no, the charge of being one. Think you are one because you don't cuss, you don't talk the way they talk. Uh, that your company will be misunderstood, and your actions will be misunderstood. No, they don't think, understand, why would anybody do that kind of stuff? Why would they take their time? Why do they dress up so nice to go to church? Well, it must really mean something to them. What's the matter with those people? They're cuckoo. Amen. A cuckoo, a bunch of nuts. Ain't going to be misunderstood. Uh, but I want to be Jesus nut. Uh, you want to call me Jesus freak, I'll be Jesus freak. Uh, and I'm not a freak, but I know they think that way. And uh, I'm not going to let their opinion of me change what I know to be in my heart. And what he did for me, they, they didn't do that for me. He, he died for me. They didn't die for me. I will serve him. I will take the ridicule. And you should be willing to. You should be willing to. Just understand that it'll, it'll take some denial of your fleshly desires, and it'll also uh, wear, wear you out as far as being misunderstood. A Christian life, if you're going to live for God, uh, you're going to have an influential life. You're going to influence people. And it's going to be influenced for good. That's priceless. There's no putting a price on that. Uh, the, when you live the Christian life, if you do not live the Christian life, you influence nobody for Jesus Christ. But if you do live the Christian life, brother, if you're obviously a Christian as you walk through the world, brother, uh, you influence people. Uh, Pablo and Karen are here, so I'll tell on them. Uh, when, they, when they got saved, uh, it wasn't long before uh, Cheryl, they call her Tiggy, and what was the other one? Michelle and then Don, uh, the uh, brother, their siblings got saved. And they were an influence to that. They brought Jesus Christ into their family circle. And their, their walk with Jesus Christ influenced these other people and they got saved. It wasn't long before their mother got saved. I don't know if dad ever got saved. He was a police officer. And those guys are kind of tough, uh, their, their self-made kind of attitude. And I don't know if he got saved or not, but mom did. And, and uh, brothers and sisters all got saved. Not only that, but the children that they got in their marriage ended up getting saved. And it spread through their family tremendously because they lived it. It wasn't just Sunday morning Christian. It was a life that was Christian, and people saw it, and people saw the way they behaved and saw the testimony that they had, and it influenced them and drew them to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's no price on that. No way. Some of you have some stories. Uh, uh, maybe uh, if, if somebody can think of one, please feel free to raise a hand. But uh, uh, right now, I think every once in a while, Leslie will tell me how it's going on her job. And boy, they don't like what she's got to talk about. She's influencing them. And what I like about it, when they get in a rough time and something starts to happen to them that's bad, that's who, that's who they'll, they'll come to her. That's who they'll come to because nobody else got no answers. But they know that she's a Christian woman, and they know she loves God, and they know she's the real deal because she ain't afraid. She's not embarrassed to speak up and say some things, and that causes an influence on people. I remember Bob Penn over there at the Harley shop, getting over there turning wrenches on Harley Davidson's. Uh, every once in a while I come to church, and here come this old mechanic in there. And Bob will come up to me and, hey, this is uh, so-and-so. This is Johnny, and he's one of our mechanics over there, so he's lost, so preach at him. I said, okay, brother. And so I try to weed a little gospel in there when Johnny's sitting back there. And a couple weeks later, here be another guy. Oh, Glenn, he's over here. I said, man, Brother Bob, you bring it. I, I guess he brought four or five people through here. Amen. And you say they get saved? I think one or two of them might have. I think he ended up telling me a couple of those guys got saved. But, brother, everybody at the Harley shop knew there was a Christian amongst them. And they, and they knew if they ever wanted to find out how to go to heaven when they died, knew, knew who to go talk to about it. I'm just saying, if you decide to live the Christian life, it's an influential life. It is priceless, brother. You influence people uh, for Jesus Christ, but you can't put a price on that. Amen. That tells people about eternity. That tells people how you don't, you, you're just wasting your life when you're living in the world. Just uh, throwing it away. But everything done for Christ is, uh, I was talking to Chris over here this afternoon in the, in the hallway there, and and I was telling him about my old life and tell him how, what a waste it was. Because he was talking about the message this morning and asked a few questions about it. So I was, I was telling him. 
and uh, got a good witness on him to tell him uh, that is a great decision, best decision I ever made was decide to not just uh, uh, take the salvation and then run off with it as a president, uh, but live it. Live the Christian life. Amen. Uh, uh, come time to uh, uh, talk with people. You frame your words in ways that God is exalted. You frame your words in ways that you don't, uh, you don't talk nasty. You don't curse. You don't tell bad jokes. You change the way you talk. Amen. You change the way you dress. Amen. No lasciviousness anymore. And the ladies are the ones with the pretty bodies, so most of the time it leans on them. Men were just ugly old bodies, so we don't have too much to worry about as far as covering up. But, but there's a level there. There's a level there of, of sensual conduct for men as well. But little ladies are the main focus on that. But Christian ladies, I like Christian ladies, don't you? Uh, they're wholesome. If they're living the Christian life, you can tell they're Christian people. Amen. Amen. And, I, and I like that stuff. You say, why is that? It's an influential life. It influences people. And it influences them for the things of God. Now take your Bible and go to Acts chapter 16, book of Acts. And we'll look at chapter 16. And you get chapter 16, look at verse uh, 28. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm. For we are all here. And then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And most of you know the story. And Paul was in jail there. And I think Silas was with him. And they sat in the jail at night and they sang. And when they sang, they weren't singing the Beatles, you know. They weren't singing uh, John Lennon and all that stuff. They were singing about Jesus. They were singing hymns, and they were singing uh, happy they were to be saved in jail. Happy to be saved in jail. I go to the jail all the time and say, how would you like you guys get out of here, get, get free? <laughs> oh, yeah, I want to be free. I say, you'd be free in Jesus Christ. You stay in the jail, but you'd be free in Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but uh, these, men, uh, these men sang, and they sang about Jesus, and everybody in the jail heard it. Everybody in the jail was influenced by what they heard. And when it came time, uh, when it came time for this young man to, to, come to come to Jesus Christ, he was willing to do it because of the testimony and the influence that uh, Paul and Silas had at that jail. So they had a very great influence on that. That jailer got saved. And all the prisoners that were, could have got loose when all the doors were open, they could have ran out. They all stayed. And I doubt they would have stayed, stayed if they hadn't had that influence that, God, that Paul gave them. So the Christian life, if you live it, it's a self-deniable life. If you decide to live it, uh, it'll be a life that's misunderstood to a great degree by the lost. And, uh, but, boy, it's worth it. It's worth it. Uh, if, if you want to live the Christian life, it'll be an, you'll, you'll influence people. If you don't live it, you, you, won't, live, you, won't, you won't influence anybody for the, for the things of God. You kids at school, you have a chance to influence the kids about Jesus Christ, but only if you open your mouth. Only if you live the Christian life in such a way they, they see the difference in, in what you do, and it makes a difference in them. Uh, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ gets spread throughout the whole world through the testimonies of all the Christians that decide to live the Christian life. So I want to encourage you this evening to live it out. The Christian life, living the Christian life is a preserving life. It preserves things. Uh, take your Bible and go to Acts 27. It's a preserving life. Uh, that has to do with uh, uh, action. Action. Uh, it has to do with uh, witnessing. Amen. That's action. Uh, it has to do with going out on the street. I don't like that stuff. You go out on the street and you got those scripture signs. You got those banners. You're out on the street and you're passing out those, those handouts. All those things are, are spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. But that's action. And those things have a way of preserving uh, the country you live in, uh, preserving the city you live in. Uh, when God was done with Sodom and Gomorrah, it was because of all the wickedness. 
But when there's, a, when there's a light going out and a constant reminder of godly things, uh, God says, hey, we got a nail here. We, we, got, we got hope for this city here. There's preservation involved there. It has to do with action. I like it. I like going by that corner and seeing you guys out there. And of course, I'm a Christian, so I like it. But there's all the Christians feel that way when they go through there. And all the lost people go, oh, man, there's them Christians. But they know Christianity's in town, and they know it means something so strong that these people are out. Amen. Amen. They could be doing anything they want, and they're standing on the corner with a dumb sign. I say dumb sign for their sakes. I, I believe it's a great sign. It has the Word of God on it, best thing going. Uh, but it's a, it's a preserving light that preserves things. I don't know what God would do with San Pedro if there was no witness here. Probably just walk away from it and say, well, there ain't no hope for that place. And there wouldn't be. If there weren't Christians here to live out their Christian life and shine the light of their Christianity, uh, it wouldn't be any use for this city to even be here. Amen. So it's a preserving thing. I think God preserves Israel because of that. Uh, God preserves America because of that. Amen. It's a preserving thing. And then lastly tonight, and I know it's a short message, but that's all right. It's Sunday night. And uh, uh, take your Bible and go to Genesis chapter 45. Genesis chapter 45. It's a, perver it's a preserving thing. And you see this with Joseph. And uh, Joseph was there, and, uh, and God used him to preserve life there in that place. Genesis 45 and verse number 7. And the Bible says here, And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by great deliverance. So the fact that Joseph was there, they thought it was a big bummer, you know, and all that stuff because they had hurt Joseph and all that, and they were feeling guilty and bad about it. He said, don't let it bother you, man. God done all this stuff to preserve. And uh, so his life was uh, a preserving thing. And there's been many a home kept from separation because of the companion uh, who lived for the Lord in that home. Uh, God, uh, God keeps things and preserves things to keep a witness or a testimony in that area. And then lastly tonight in Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 4, living the godly life is a convincing life. It convinces people to make a choice and make a decision. And uh, a, a life that is not lived for God uh, encourages nobody to make decisions for the Lord. Uh, go to Acts chapter 4, and we'll look at verse 13. Acts 4 and verse 13, the Bible says, And now when they saw uh, the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Amen. So it was uh, a convincing life. with The way they were doing things and preaching and all those things, it convinced all those people that these men were not schooled and educated people, but bless God, they had been with Jesus. They, they had something to say about Jesus Christ. And they had something to offer the community that wasn't just foolishness and wasteful, but something that could go out in eternity. Amen. And so uh, when they saw the boldness of Peter and them, uh, it was something that convinced people uh, to, um, to know about God and to make decisions about God. And uh, they were encouraged and convinced uh, to stand for the truth. Now take your Bible and go to Titus chapter 1, book of Titus. My message uh, tonight, I think you got it already, and that is uh, uh, don't hide your light. Don't hide your light under a bushel. Let her shine. Let her shine. The days we're living in right now are evil days. And the Bible said in the last days the wicked shall wax worse and worse. So if there's persecution 10 years ago, probably a little harder now. If they mocked people 10 years ago, they'll probably make, mock them a little more now because they're more and more wicked now. So it's a little, it's a little more uh, restringent or restraining to, to the Christian to want to do such things. But it's still good. And it's still right. And it's still profitable, and it still means something to God. Amen. Uh, Titus chapter 1 and verse number 9. And the Bible says, uh, Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. 
For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped. I like that. Who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. And the Bible says there that, uh, uh, that uh, he said, uh, you ought to stand in opposition. Uh, stop their mouths. Right now they just have free reign to say what they want, but here comes somebody else with a different viewpoint. Amen. I like that Ken Hovind guy. All the, all the Darwin people and all the evolutionists and all the uh, you know, uh, anti-creation people all gathered together. Here come old Ken Hovind. And he say, uh, excuse me, sir, like Alfred Lyon, excuse me, sir, I got, uh, I got something to say about creation. And brother, I, he's got one there, and uh, one of these atheists stood on the panel, and he said, um, how do you know there's a God? Something like that, some question like, how do you know there's a God? And man, when he got done with that guy, he just made him look stupid. I like Ken Hoven. And Ken Hoven had a lot of good things to say. You ever want to watch a good YouTube, look up Ken Hoven. And we'll listen to him preach at all these, uh, these uh, uh, scientists and, and all these evolution people. And he, boy, he, he puts them in their place. And he is not afraid at all. He is not intimidated by any of them. He knows what he has is right. He knows it's the truth. Whether they see it or not is their problem. But bless God, it doesn't, it doesn't slow him down a bit. Boy, he's standing right in the middle of it, right at the college. All these young people standing there. And he just makes them look foolish. And, uh, and all the Christians in the audience go, yay! <laughs> and then the scientist, he gets done, and he's got a few atheists in the back, yay! But you don't hear a whole lot of that, but you can hear the Christians, boy, and they're hollering, they're having a good time, and they know they got a brother there, and they know got a spokesman for the cause of Jesus Christ. And they're not getting anything beneficial out of it. Well, they are. They're learning some things from Ken Hovind because he's real smart about that stuff. Uh, but, boy, they want to see Jesus magnified because he's done so much for us. Amen. And it's a small thing to ask somebody to live for Jesus Christ. Uh, that, that's a small thing. That should, be, that should be easy. That should be something that I would jump at. Amen. Uh, it's sad to say a lot of Christians don't jump at it. A lot of Christians are caught up with all this cell phone age and this computer age, and there's a lot of thrills and excitements going around, and they can invest themselves in so many different things. But I want to encourage all of you tonight that the, the life of Jesus Christ, the life of Christian life is a good life. It's a right life. It's an influencing life. It will help people. Even if you don't get to see it, I, I, I can't wait to get to heaven. I can't wait to get to heaven and see all the people that were influenced by coming through this church. I don't get to see all the ones that got saved later. I don't get to see all the things that were said and done because they came here. But I know sometimes they come through and sometimes they go on out and more come in. Sometimes they get saved here and then they go out. Who knows where they go? But it's going to be good to see someday. A after all the time that Bayview has been here in San Pedro since 1980, August of 1980, all the way up until now, I, I bet you it's influenced tons and tons of people. I can't wait to see. But that's a church. But uh, that could be said about one individual just as well. Amen. Uh, the influence that uh, you have to stand your ground for Jesus Christ is tremendous. And to go the opposite way is the influence for the opposite. Jasmine's got some sisters went the other way. She still holds them. Amen. She's still a, a light, still testimony, still going out, still putting it out. Nothing's changing. She's not vocal. She doesn't say anything, but she lives it. Amen. And you see it. You see it, and it matters to people. And the other ones, they get nothing. When you talk to the other ones, uh, nothing about God. I don't want to say the other ones. I know, uh, I think Hannah's trying. She's getting back in church, so that's good to hear. And there's hope for the other ones. If they really got saved, there's hope for them, too. I hope they get right. I hope they get right. I think Marcus got saved. I really do. I think he got saved. If he really did, he'd be back. It might take a while, but he'll be back. He's being influenced by something else. Uh, Haley, Haley's having a rough time. If she really got saved, she'll be back. Uh, what's the other one? Amanda. If she really got, I think she was saved. I think she really got saved. That was a good little girl. Used to play our piano. Sweet little girl. And uh, I think she'll be back. I think just probably take time. She's sideways right now, twisted all up, got uh, listening to some idiots or forming wrong opinions. And, uh, and she's never going to testify for the Lord all the years she's living now, outside or backslid, of no value to God whatsoever. But boy, the ones that still stand, they're the ones that shine. 
And I hope everybody here in here decides to shine. All right, let's all stand tonight. You know,